What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? This is Muscle, and this is another Two Line Music Cuts Entertainment Report podcast, The Pull Up. And today we have a really special guest. Listen, this is a veteran singer that's been in the reggae music from in the 80s up until right now. He's a great soul artist, and he's also great in the group Lust. You know, we have in the building today, we have Mr. Thriller You in the building today. What's going on, Big Boss? What's up, General? Respect is respect and manners is manners. It's a pleasure being here. Yeah, really. Definitely. Thank you so much for actually joining us here on the Entertainment Report podcast because I know you'll be coming to Toronto Mother's Day weekend and we're going to be talking about all that good stuff just now too. Yes, man. I'll be there for sure. Mother's Day weekend, I'll be there. Mm -hmm. when, was, when was the last time you were in Toronto? Um... It's been so long, I can't even remember. I'll be honest with you. Mm -hmm. It's been a couple of years. It was like years before the pandemic, you know? So, <laughs> it was, it's been a while. It's been a while. It's been a while. Okay, so then let me bring you back to something more historical. That's something I know this will be planted in your mind somewhere. What was your first time like coming to Toronto? Well, I can remember when I was a youth, my first time I was there to perform with Lady G, Pony General, um, um, Papa San, and you know, those authentic art artists from that was years ago, 19, I think it was 1989, 90. Mm -hmm. Yes, around them time, the first time, it was like overwhelming for me because you know, I've never ever seen snow in my life, and I got the, I got the chance to experience snow mm -hmm. at that time. And what was what was snow like, especially from somebody that never seen it before? What was that like for you? Well, it was very, very intriguing. I mean, I, it was very, very surprising for me to see snow, really touching snow and understand what how snow operates, you know? Mm -hmm. Trust me. Right there, definitely. So that was your first show. And how was the show? Did the show actually work out or how, how did it? Yeah, man, them show that was, was the authentic day. The days when, kind of those days when we used to just have people come and dance and just spend their money and everybody just come and I want to tell you something too. At those times, at, at those times, you know, people, when you come and show the promoters, they used to take care of artists differently, you know. And they're like, no, they used to take care of artists differently. I mean, hmm. you go, you go, you come to the show, them can go shopping all up their ex, all at their expense. And you know, hmm. it was just, <laughs> yeah. Those times you made an artist feel like an artist at that time there. Like a, like a king. Like mm -hmm. if I ask, like a king. <laughs> I must say, yeah. yeah. Yeah, definitely. And what was your first hit song that you, you actually recorded and came out for you? The first song that I had was a hit song called Juggling. It was on the fire was label by, produced by King Tubbies. Mm -hmm. Juggling every time. Yeah. You know, that song. Mm -hmm. Was the first it's somebody do 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 Far East. Huh? Far East rhythm, yes. Yes, man. Because when when I really started to notice you was when you were doing some work with um King Jammies and even techniques at this time. This is the time I see Thriller You really the prominence of Thriller You at that time there. Yes, yes. After Tubby's pass, you know, after Tubby's pass, then I get the opportunity to you know, I go to Jammies and I go to King, I go to um Penthouse and I go to Bobby Digital and and Riley, you know, mm -hmm. Technics Records, yeah, man. So I just spread my wings from there because, you know, Tubby was no more. So I I, 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 wouldn't, I wouldn't be confined to the studio anymore because the studio was out of business, you know. Mm -hmm. yes. Definitely. And I know one of your mega, mega hits, again, this came out of Techniques, was I'll Prove It To You on the Rhythm Day. Yes. What made you decide to sing that song on that rhythm there in particular? Well, to say first to say, I, I, I'm, I've always been a lover of Gregory Abbott songs, you know, Gregory Abbott, you know. Mm -hmm. And I always listen, as a youth growing up, I always listen to those kind of songs. Anything R&B, lovers rock and, you know, soul music. Um, as if you know the thriller, you, if I follow the thriller, you know that I always stick to the soul music and the lovers rock kind of music. But that's my mind. Mm -hmm. But yeah, um, that rhythm was out and it was a big rhythm with Johnny P. Ah, uh, name Oldbrook. Ah, la de gala, me no fight for you, Oldbrook. So I wanted to be a part of the rhythm too because Johnny P was, was my artist then, still is my okay. DJ. Mm -hmm. And you know, 
And I'm telling you, Don Johnny P was cutting me up on that rhythm, man. Riley come to me and say, yo, Trina, I want you on this rhythm, you know, because this rhythm, rhythm, I take off, you know, you know, I want you on this rhythm. I said, okay. He said, okay, I'm going to the studio. And I, and I, I, I was listening to the, 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 the Gregory Abbott song, prove it to you. And I decided that this song can't fit it, man. And I just sing the song on the rhythm. It just, you know, it just went out and was successful. Yes, mm -hmm. it was. When did you realize this song had really taken off for you? Was it something you heard on the radio? People started to tell you. When was it that moment no, that you remember that song? Took not off? only radio, not only radio. It was when I traveled out of Jamaica. Mm -hmm. And people were requesting, sing this song, sing prove it to you. You know, and because sometimes you don't know the songs that release overseas for you, you know, until you go overseas yourself. And mm -hmm. when you go overseas, you, know, you realize that, what a song of the release and the song you run a place, so, ah, that's how it is, you know. Because mm -hmm. remember, in the, in the business, those days, those Ghana's those days, we were just doing music, not, not doing music for money. We were just doing it because of the love of the music. Mm -hmm. So we didn't have the business aspect well checked down and everything, you know. It was just music, doing music, yeah. Yeah. And when you, I guess, so then now when you went on the road and the people started to say, hey, sing this song here, that's when you know, okay, right. this is the right. big one right here. Right, right, exactly. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And what hit came after I'll Prove It To You? Um, um, before I Prove It To You, have my love, like, let my love shine throughout the world for jammies. I got songs like, um, I've been sitting in the park. Then came along songs like, just take a close and look into my eyes. Those songs on the color color rhythm mm -hmm. for Red Man. Yes, and so many songs. It was just too much songs because those days you have, you, when you're busting or you're in demand, you just have to be going to studio to do new song, new song. So songs taking over songs and songs running, licking out songs out of chart. And that's how it was, you know? Mm -hmm. Yes. For sure. And what do you miss the most about those days in the business when you were fresh, bushy eyed, you know what I mean, ready to go. What do you really miss about back then? Trust me, I miss that the producers, the real producers that used to produce and the real authentic reggae music that, you know, that people could actually go out and dance, rent a tile and dance. Mm -hmm. Nowadays, this music are too draggy. They have too much nastiness in the music, too much gun, there's too much woman under that and woman under this and under woman this and, you know? So mm -hmm. I really miss the authentic reggae that you can play and everybody can have it as an household reggae to listen to your house, you have your, 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 your vinyl, your vinyl to play. You know, I, I miss the vinyl days. Believe me, I do miss those days. Mm -hmm. Because those days, the true days, you know, how much record you sell at the time, you know? Yeah, for sure. And what would you think gives you the staying power? Because as you said, there's certain things change in the business that you don't really like, but you're still here after all of these years. Why do you think that you're still in the business and who you are after so long? Well, it, it has a lot to do with consistency, you know, and not only that too. You see, when you're an authentic singer mm -hmm. and you do authentic music and people look up to you as a veteran, because whatever you do is clean music, clean love, yeah, them love your clean music, then that's what keep me. What sustain me in the business is to keep myself relevant. Now, Kiowa, try to do something and try to just be, um, trying to be, um, on the go where music is concerned. So a producer come to that rhythm. I try to get on that rhythm, you know, and try to make a good song. Just make good music because good music is what lasts. Mm -hmm. I can tell you that the songs nowadays, if I heard songs that released, uh, four, four years ago and, when you hear them, I say, yo, them a song in a kind of real jeopardy, no, them a kind of long jeopardy, them a kind of real, no real, no real substance, you know, because they, they, them just come and just go too quick, you know? Mm -hmm. But if you play, if you play these foreigners, they call our kind of music retro music. If you play the retro reggae, them retro music, you, 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 you can. As people hear it, them love it and stick to it and just start dance to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So me being relevant, keeping me in this business. And that is why I live dread. Can't say, boy, I'm one. Trina, you for come on these shows in Canada. Mm -hmm. Definitely. On the 10th, 11th, and 12th of May. Yeah, man. Three shows here. We're about to get to that. I got two more questions before we even get to that. I know you, uh, you're an amazing singer by yourself. And Thank you're you. also Thank an you. amazing singer in the group Lust. What's the biggest Thank difference you. with you? You're welcome. What's the biggest difference you find with a Thriller You as a solo artist opposed to a Thriller You in the group Lust? And I found out that performing as Trilla You, I can sing Trilla You songs more. I can get more time to do Trilla You projects, mm -hmm. you know, to sing and just be entertained, to, to entertain the people more, 
you know, because in loss, uh, there are, we have to have our respect for each other. So we can't behave like we want to take over the show with our songs or so on. So, mm -hmm. you know, but singing by myself, I get the opportunity to perform as Triller You, to give them a Triller You, you know, kind of performance that, you know, people been always eating for every time I touch the stage singing as Triller You, them love it, you know? Yeah, man. For sure, right there. And even you said you haven't been to Canada, Toronto in particular, in years now. Is there any one thing when you come to Toronto outside of performing that you want to do? Either somewhere you want to go see, some food you want to go eat, something in particular you want to do in well, Toronto? Well, what, what I would like to do won't be available, the snow. <laughs> oh, don't play the snow. Hope, hopefully, hopefully the snow won't be wrong. Hopefully. hopefully. Yeah, hopefully, you know, because I mean, you know. Mm. So hopefully, <laughs> yeah. So the snow left such such a lasting impression on you that you really yeah, want to see I it again. I love snow. I love the snow. I love the snow. It, it, mm -hmm. You know, I don't like cold, you know, but somehow the snow have a vibe. You know, you know. I yeah. mean, it's that time for everything, and I'm telling that the snow actually does give me a vibe. Me feel like me like a kid again. You know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so yes, next man. time, next time we get the snow, I'm gonna directly mail it. Over to Triller you. Tell them the people oh, in Toronto some... doesn't want it, we're gonna mail it to you. No, I tell you something, you know. The first time I went to Canada, I bring home some snow in our bottle. <laughs> when, I, when I put it in the bottle by the reach of the mint because <laughs> 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 I wanted to show that I know it's snow. I should have all snow yeah. snow. Yeah. Melt. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Crazy. That's that's what is <laughs> right there. The fact that you yes. try to Bottle it to carry it back home and you couldn't, but it's all good. You know what I mean? Yeah, man. Yeah, man. <laughs> Definitely. So as we said, Mother's Day weekend, May 10th, May 11th, May 12th, Eleven, you're on 12th. three shows. The first show is Tribute to the Legends that features yourself singing Melody, Glenn Washington, Norris Mann, Professor Nuts, and so much more. And then the 11th, Unite the People, is you again, singing Melody, Richie Stevens, Norris Mann, and more again. Okay, and then finally, on the Sunday, Mother's Day Sunday, you have Luciana, yourself, Richie Stevens, Turbulence, so much more. Listen, what can we actually expect from Thriller You after you haven't been so here for so long? On these three dates here, what could the Canadian people expect from you? You know, if I talk it, you know, it's it, the secret that go out, you know, but I'm going to just say this. Mm -hmm. Just ex I, I, I'm expecting to get there and just give them their money worth. Mm -hmm. I'm expecting to get there and perform like I've never done before. I'm expecting to go there and please the people. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm expecting, you know? So I'm looking forward to see the, the, the people come out and support this, this, this Mother's Day weekend mm -hmm. because this is more than something you can bargain for, for your money. More than so much artists, so much super artists in on one bill. Wow. So I'm expecting to see the turnout proper and I'm expecting to give the people what they want. Mm. And more. Yeah. And more. And more. That's a good thing. And especially the good thing with it, it's brought to you by Kings of Kings Entertainment, which is with Eileen yes. Dredd and the crew there. Eilie they Dredd haven't the put on something for a Do you remember working with Eileen Dredd, either production or on a show? Yeah, man. Long time back in the day, you know, in Jamaica, yeah, man. I'm mm -hmm. doing thing, you know? Mm -hmm. Right there. Big up. Okay. Last thing I'm going to ask you for. When you hit the stage, give them one song that they could look forward to when you hit the stage here in Toronto. Well, I can give him something like, Look in my eyes, what do you see? There's no doubt the message is clear. I'll prove it to you, starting tonight. I'm going to prove my love, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, man. <laughs> I would echo. You see, that's how I know you're a true professional right there. You understand? Blessings. <laughs> you understand? Blessings to you. The floor is yours right now. Anything you want to say, anybody you want to big up, leave some social media contact. I just want to big up each and every one. And if they want to follow Trilla You, they can follow me on TikTok. Trilla You, the world singer. They can follow me on Facebook. You know, Eustace Hamilton, Trilla You underscore the world singer on IG. And if you want to get in touch with Trilla You for a booking, you can call my number, you know, you can email me first. My email is thrillerutheworldsinger at gmail.com. 
or you can call my number 1-876-417-1119. I want to say a big respect to you, my friend. God bless you all and all the crew. Entertainment Report Podcast at the time. Definitely. We will see you, as I said, May 10th, 11th, 12th, inside of Toronto for the big, big show coming up through you. I can't wait till you're actually in Toronto where I could actually sit down with you in the studio and get into a real in-depth reasoning because there's a lot of yeah, in your career that I really want to sit down and talk to you. But, but when you get to Toronto that for that weekend, we'll talk. Yeah, man. Definitely. All right? All right. So then on that, let me give you an outro and get you out of here. All right, boss? Yeah, man. Blessings. Bomb. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this is Muscle, and this has been another Two Line Music Huts Entertainment Report podcast, The Pull Up, and we are out. This podcast is brought to you by www.twolinedmusichut.com.